Hello, welcome uh, to this video. In this video, I just want to do a short, quick tutorial about my workflow for the tutorial videos that you're about to watch as part of this programming from A to Z playlist, but also I use this workflow in a lot of my other videos in Coding Challenges, and I'm sure my workflow will change at some point in the future, but this is relevant for the time period that it's relevant. So let me just come over here and make a short uh, list of some things that I'm using. So one thing is you want to make sure, uh, if you want to use my exact workflow, there are lots of other workflows, uh, you want to install something called node.js. And then you want to install, and I'm going to show you how to do this, a node package called HTTP server. This runs a little local web server on your computer that hosts the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files that you're programming and working with so that you can see them. You know, of course, you can just double click them and open them in the browser. But if you run an actual web server on your computer, um, you're going to mirror the real situation when you eventually publish your files to a web server somewhere. So I use those. I, you also need a text editor to edit your code and edit the JavaScript files, the HTML files, all that sort of stuff. I'm using a text editor called Atom. Uh, and with this text editor, I'm using a package called, I think it's called Adam. <laughs> oh, links to all these things will be in this video's description, so if I get the name wrong. Uh, Adam-beautify. So that's, an, uh, that's something that I just like that auto-indents my code and that sort of thing. Um, and then I should also mention that there are a bunch of, I believe there's something called Adam Live Server, and there are uh, other packages in Atom that will run the server for you that you can use instead of HTTP server if you prefer. I should also mention that I'm uh, working with uh, P5.js libraries. So you'll see that all of my projects have a bunch of extra JavaScript files associated with them that come from uh, P5.js and P5.dom.js. Um, and eventually soon, I, I can't, uh, later this month, if you're watching this in, a, in September 2016, um, there will be a web editor that you can use um, with a P5.js for developing sketches and ideas that go along with this course as well. And at some point when that is released, I'll demonstrate that in a video as well. I should also mention that there are lots of other uh, wonderful code editors you can use online, CodePen. Uh, is one uh, that I've used. It has a wonderful professor mode, which allows you to type code and that your students see on their screens the code that you're typing in real time. Uh, JS Fiddle, uh, Thimble, uh, and um, I don't know why I can't think of other good ones that I'm forgetting now. <laughs> so I apologize if you make a wonderful code editor online that I'm not thinking of. So this is the workflow I'm using. Let me demonstrate it for you rather quickly. Here I am over here. <laughs> uh, and okay, so Adam is something you should download from <laughs> uh, Adam.io. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just going to run it here. Uh, it is a oh, it's already opening something. So let's when you open it, it'll <laughs> probably look more like this, an empty thing. I could. Do Command N, and I have a new file, and I can type stuff into it. So it's just a text editor. Any text editor will do. Oh, er, yes, install my update, I guess. Oh, what's going to happen? Everything's going to break. No, please work. OK. Um, so, uh, OK, so this is Adam. Uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, um, packages you can install, you can see here, this is this Beautify package that I'm using. And I'm also using something called Atom key mapping. So I set it to Beautify to be to command T, which is my preference uh, shortcut. Um, so uh, maybe I could cover that in another video or a link to how to set up key mappings in Atom in this video's description. Um, and you, you can also see there, I, uh, do I have the live server somewhere? A live server here. So you can see this is a live server package, which will also start a live server you can install. How do you install Atom packages? Uh, uh, I forget. Window. I was going to say preferences. Uh, uh, packages. Yes. So uh, and maybe I could um, <laughs> timeout. Pause. Oh yes. No. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> Install. So here's a place that I can that you can search for packages or find featured packages to install um, and add things to Atom. Okay, so then now the other thing you want to install is uh, Node, which I'm going to, uh, which you can find at node.org. You can download and install Node, and then from uh, terminal you can um, from terminal you can use something called uh, npm, which stands for Node Package Manager. And you want to type npm HTTP 
dash oops http dash server this is installing the web server that i'm using but you can't just install http dash server you need to say dash g for global meaning you're making this a global package which means you can just access it instead of being a package that's for one project it's just accessible on your computer until the end of time, basically, or until you uninstall Node. And if you do that, you also probably want to say sudo, because you might need sudo as a way of saying, I'm the administrator of this computer. I have permission to install something globally. And if I hit Enter, it's going to ask me for my password. And then uh, I already installed it, so I don't know what just happened there. But uh, oh, I said to hold the wrong command entirely. <laughs> Hope you're not. Uh, npm install HTTP server. And now. Um, it's going to install it. So it's installing it, and once I've done that, uh, I can, I'm running a web server in a bunch of other directories, so I'm gonna stop that. I can just, anywhere I am on the computer, I can just say HTTP dash server, and I can uh, run a web server. Now, where do you wanna run the web server from? Probably from a directory where you have a project that you're working on, like I have this load text project, I can cd to that directory, I can say HTTP server, and then I can go to the browser with this particular URL, which is just the local host of my computer, 127.0.0.1 colon 8080. And, uh, oops, I can go back to the browser, and I can paste that URL in, and you can see, oops, refresh. <laughs> there's the project. It was, uh, you can see there's nothing there because there's no code in that project. But if I were to add some code to that project, you would see this project displayed in the page. Now, uh, one other thing I think that I, I thought of that I wanted to mention about this, which I've now completely forgotten. <laughs> oh, yes. If you don't like port 8080, uh, you can also, one thing I'll mention to you is you can say HTTP dash server uh, dash P, and I can make up a port like, What's my favorite number? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, maybe I should, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna, yeah, higher port numbers are better that you don't mess up something that's already running on your computer. So I'm gonna say 8081. And you can see now I'm running that same server on 8081. So you can't run multiple web servers on the same port, but if you need to run multiple web servers on the same time, you can use different ports. Okay, so that's a quick just little ditty. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, my workflow. I'm sure I missed something or you have questions about it, which you can ask in the comments. And now you're ready to go and watch the video tutorials where I actually make some stuff using this workflow. Okay, thanks.